Hi, this is Tom from zerodefinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through bowel obstruction. And you can find written notes on this topic at zerodefinals.com slash surgery or in the Zero Definals surgery book. So let's jump straight in. A bowel obstruction refers to when the passage of food, fluid and gas through the intestines becomes blocked. Small bowel obstruction is more common than large bowel obstruction. Obstruction results in a buildup of gas and faecal matter proximal to the obstruction before the obstruction. This causes back pressure resulting in vomiting and dilation of the intestines proximal to the obstruction. Bowel obstruction is a surgical emergency. The gastrointestinal tract secretes fluid that is later absorbed in the colon. And when there's an obstruction, this fluid cannot reach the colon and it cannot be reabsorbed. As a result, there is fluid loss from the intravascular space into the gastrointestinal tract. This leads to hypovolemia and shock as the fluid that should normally be in the body is actually lost into the bowel. This abnormal loss of fluid is referred to as third spacing. The higher up the intestine the obstruction is, the greater the fluid loss as there is less bowel over which the fluid can be reabsorbed. Let's talk about the causes. The big three causes that account for around 90% of cases of bowel obstruction are adhesions, which affect the small bowel, hernias, which typically affect the small bowel, and tumours, which most often affect the large bowel. Other causes include volvulus, which affects the large bowel, diverticular disease, strictures, for example secondary to Crohn's disease, and intersusception, which affects young children aged 6 months to 2 years. A Tom tip for you, learn to recite the big three causes of obstruction without any hesitation. These are the three causes of bowel obstruction you should be able to produce if asked on a ward round or in an OSCE examination. When patients present with symptoms of bowel obstruction, don't just think about obstruction but also consider what the cause of the obstruction could be. Ask about hernias, a change in bowel habit, weight loss and PR bleeding, which may indicate bowel cancer, and about previous abdominal surgery that may have resulted in adhesions. Let's talk a little bit about adhesions. Adhesions are pieces of scar tissue that bind the abdominal contents together. They can cause kinking or squeezing of the bowel, leading to obstruction. Adhesions typically cause obstruction in the small bowel rather than the large bowel. The main causes of intestinal adhesions are abdominal or pelvic surgery, particularly open surgery as opposed to laparoscopic surgery peritonitis, abdominal or pelvic infections, for example pelvic inflammatory disease, and endometriosis. Less commonly they can be congenital or secondary to radiotherapy treatment. Let's talk about closed loop obstruction. Closed loop obstruction describes a situation where there are two points of obstruction along the bowel meaning that there's a middle section sandwiched between the two points of obstruction. This middle section is isolated without being able to drain in either direction because there's an obstruction at both ends. This might happen because of adhesions that compress two areas of the bowel, hernias that isolate a section of the bowel blocking either end, a volvulus where the twist isolates a section of the intestine, or a single point of obstruction in the large bowel with an ileocecal valve that is competent. A competent ileocecal valve 
does not allow any movement back into the ileum from the cecum. When there is a large bowel obstruction and a competent ileocecal valve, a section of the bowel becomes isolated as the contents cannot move in either direction, either past the obstruction distally or through the ileocecal valve proximally. The contents of a closed loop section of bowel do not have any open end where they can drain and decompress. Therefore, the closed loop section will inevitably continue to expand, leading to ischemia and perforation. Closed loop obstruction requires emergency surgery. Let's talk about the presentation of bowel obstruction. The key features of bowel obstruction are vomiting, particularly green bilious vomiting, abdominal distension, diffuse abdominal pain, absolute constipation and a lack of flatulence, and finally in early bowel obstruction the bowel sounds may be described as tinkling. Let's talk about abdominal x-rays. The key finding of bowel obstruction in an abdominal x-ray is distended loops of bowel. The upper limits for the normal diameter of bowel are 3 cm for the small bowel, 6 cm for the colon and 9 cm for the cecum. The valvulae conovents are present in the small bowel and their mucosal folds that form lines that extend the full width of the bowel. And these are seen on an abdominal x-ray as lines across the entire width of the bowel, indicating that that area is small bowel. Horstra are like pouches formed by the muscles in the walls of the large bowel. They form lines that do not extend the full width of the bowel. They only come in part of the way from the edge of the bowel. These are seen on an abdominal x-ray as lines that extend only part of the way across the bowel, indicating that this is a section of large bowel. So the valvulae conovents and the horstra are a good way of you distinguishing between the large and the small bowel on an x-ray. Let's talk about the initial management of bowel obstruction. As with any unwell patient, start with an ABCDE approach. Patients with bowel obstruction may be hemodynamically unstable and require urgent intervention if they've developed hypovolemic shock due to fluid stuck in the bowel rather than the intravascular space. Remember we talked about third spacing. Bowel ischemia, bowel perforation, or sepsis. A full set of bloods are required as with any acute abdomen. Key things to look out for with bowel obstruction are electrolyte imbalances on the use and ease blood test, metabolic alkalosis due to vomiting stomach acid, which you might see on a venous blood gas, and bowel ischemia, which is indicated by a raised lactate, which can either be tested on a venous blood gas or a laboratory sample. The initial management of a bowel obstruction is casually described as drip and suck. The patient needs to be nil by mouth. Don't put any food or fluids in if there's a blockage of the gastrointestinal tract. The drip refers to IV fluids which are used to hydrate the patient and correct any electrolyte imbalances. And the suck refers to an NG tube with free drainage to allow the stomach contents to freely drain and reduce the risk of vomiting and aspiration. An abdominal x-ray may be the initial imaging investigation. However, depending on the signs and symptoms, this may be skipped and the patient sent straight for a CT scan. An erect chest x-ray can be used to demonstrate air under the diaphragm when there is an intra-abdominal perforation. And a contrast abdominal CT scan is usually required to confirm the diagnosis of a bowel obstruction and establish the site and the cause of the obstruction. 
It can also be used to diagnose any intra-abdominal perforation if it's present. Let's talk about the surgical intervention in bowel obstruction. Conservative management may be used in the first instance in stable patients with obstruction secondary to adhesions or a volvulus. And where this fails, surgery is required. The definitive management of bowel obstruction is with surgery, either laparoscopy or laparotomy, to correct the underlying cause. Exploratory surgery is used in patients where there's an unclear underlying cause. Adhesiolysis can be used to treat adhesions. Hernia repair may be necessary if it's caused by a hernia. And if it's caused by a tumour, they may require emergency resection of the obstructing tumour. Stents may be inserted into the bowel during a colonoscopy in patients with obstruction due to a tumour. Stents hold the tumour out of the way, create space and allow the bowel contents to move through the bowel. If you like this video, consider joining the Zero to Finals Patreon account, where you get early access to these videos before they appear on YouTube. You also get access to my comprehensive course on how to learn medicine and do well in medical exams, digital flashcards for rapidly testing the key facts you need for medical exams, early access to the Zero to Finals podcast episodes, and question podcasts which you can use to test your knowledge on the go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.